There were six confirmed cases by Friday in Fond du Lac County. I feel that this may be only the tip of the iceberg. Many others may be walking around with very mild symptoms or no symptoms at all, but still carry and can transmit the virus. And this is the very reason why our government officials are recommending social distancing. Having large amounts of people gathered together only promotes spikes in the amount of cases, and these spikes can easily overwhelm our healthcare system. We are about two weeks behind what has been happening in Italy, and if you've been reading the news, you can see that their healthcare system is very much overwhelmed. Because this is a new virus, information is changing on it every day. Currently, it appears that older adults, those with diabetes, those with heart disease, and those with immune system disorders are at highest risk. With that being said, I urge you to take precautionary measures, even if you do not fall into one of these categories. Simple steps can help prevent the spread, such as proper hand washing techniques and washing hands often. Using hand sanitizer for those times you are unable to wash your hands, avoid touching your face, avoid contact with the sick, and stay home if you are not feeling well clean and disinfect surfaces frequently. On Thursday, I went around and disinfected all the door handles, the railings, the visitor sign-in books, the pens, the pew backs, and the pew sides, the counters and the tables in the east narthex. The church will again be disinfected this week. And please consider only doing what is necessary at this time. If you are demonstrating symptoms of the COVID-19, such as cough, fever, and fatigue, please call your primary doctor before rushing into urgent care. They will direct you on the steps you need to take. Again, we need to save the emergency room for emergencies. There is also a survey on the front page of the SSM Ignatian Healthcare website that asks you step-by-step -step questions to see if you should call your doctor. Author Malcolm Mugridge once said, all news is old news happening to new people. Past generations have experienced this, but most of us have not. Remember that nothing that is happening in this world today is news to God. He reigns over all, and we will continue to seek him through this. We, as believers, can be a beacon of light in this and offer hope to the hopeless. Please consider how we can continue to show Christ's love during this time. Maybe call those that cannot have visitors. Volunteer to pick up medications or groceries for those at high risk. And please pray for those working diligently in our hospitals as they have been preparing. Do not hesitate to contact me this week with any questions or concerns. And I will leave you with this verse from 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Thank you and have a blessed day. So things will be a little bit different with the service. We'll just go with it. I would invite all who are able to please rise and let us join together in our call to worship. O oh, come, let us sing to our Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to God's presence with thanksgiving. God is great, sovereign above all powers and principalities. The deep in the depths of the earth, the heights and mountains, indeed all of creation, were made by God and belong to God. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Holy One, our Maker. Yes, God is our God, and we are God's people. Let us not harden our hearts as they did in the wilderness. When our ancestors tested our liberator, requiring the proof of God's faithfulness, even though they had witnessed miracles. For forty years God contended with, the, with that generation and said, They are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not regard my ways. Today we rededicate our hearts to you and strain our ears to hear your voice. Seek now, still seeking God, for your people are listening. Please.
Please remain standing and join me in singing this hymn, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken, in the red hymnal, page 304, or projected. join me in the prayer of invocation. God of grace and truth, we come to your house today to worship you. We bring all ourselves to you, all of the good, the bad, and the ugly. We entrust our hidden, fearful, and fragile selves to your transforming power and gentle, loving care. Blessing, glory, and honor yours alone. Thank you for the many ways your spirit breaks into our lives and into this troubled world. We offer this prayer in the name of the one whose name is above every name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Scripture reading today comes, ex comes from Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidium. 
but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb, at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Our second scripture today comes from Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are also, are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, t- oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as at, at Meribah, as on the day at Massa in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof. Though they had seen my work, for forty days I loathed that generation and said, They are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not regard my ways. Therefore, in my anger I swore, they shall not enter my rest. This ends our scripture lesson. Let us join together in our prayer of confession, which is a responsive prayer of confession. God of mercy, hear the prayers of your thirsty people. For every time we have attributed your miracles in our lives to our own hands alone. Forgive us, we pray. For every time we promise to trust you but turned to our own way when your response did not come soon enough or in the way we expected. Grant us mercy, O God. For the many opportunities to extend forgiveness that we have refused. Show us what it means to love again, dear Lord. For each way we put our own understandings above your wisdom. Each time we resist your command to be reconciled with those who believe differently from us. Direct us in the way of peace, we pray. For our silent sins, our quiet acts of violence, and our indifference to the suffering around us. Forgive us, loving one, and quench our thirst with your grace. Remake us into vessels of tenderness and compassion. For Christ's sake. Because of God's great love for us, we have peace with God and access to God's grace all through Jesus Christ, who, while we were still sinners, died to free us from the bondage of sin. Therefore, we may ask of Christ to give us the living water that quenches the dryness of our souls. In trusting Jesus, we know we are forgiven. So instead of passing the peace, turn, smile, pray, hands to everybody around you (laughs) as a sign of blessing.
third scripture lesson today comes from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, since we were justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of the sharing glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For, for while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were singer, sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while, we were, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have been re received reconciliation. Our Gospel lesson today comes from John chapter 4, verses 5 through 42. So he came to a Sumerian city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flock drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is here and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such of these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. 
the woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want, or why are you speaking to her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city, from that city, believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, This is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This ends our gospel lesson. So I've been adjusting things a little bit for the service because uh, I knew Sunday school wasn't going to happen. That was decided this weekend. So what I've done is I've taken a video. It's one of the ones we use in confirmation, and there's a ton of great resources on YouTube. And one of the things that we found that's neat is to do different videos that are saying the same thing from slightly different perspectives and then talk about the difference between them. This is one of the ones where we use two or three of them and put them together at different times, but it's a simple two minute clip on just the basic understanding of Christianity. So, and it's meant for children, so hopefully you all will get it because it's meant for children. So you're gonna have to pay close attention, it might be a quiz. What is Christianity? The central tenet of Christianity is the belief in Jesus as the Son of God and Savior of humanity. But from what does humanity need saving? To answer that, we go back to the beginning. Christianity teaches that there is only one God, and that in the beginning, this God spoke the entire universe into existence. On earth, God creates two people, a man and a woman, named Adam and Eve. They are to tend the garden in which they live, and they are free to eat from any tree except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Some time later, Eve is tempted by Satan and eats from this tree. Then Adam eats from it too. It's at this point that the two become aware and understand good and evil, evidenced by a new shame of their nakedness. Disobeying God results in them being expelled from the garden of Eden and suffering the effect of death. Many generations after Adam, God chooses a man named Abraham to make into a great nation, a nation that will one day birth the Messiah to release mankind from the bondage of sin and death. Our modern calendar splits time at the approximate date of the birth of Jesus, who Christians believe is the promised Messiah. According to the New Testament, Jesus is born to a virgin named Mary, lives a sinless life, and then willingly sacrifices himself as the substitutionary atonement for the sins of mankind. The word atonement is used to describe an act that pays for or erases one's sins and transgressions. Three days later, Jesus defeats death by resurrecting from the dead to open heaven to those who believe in him and trust him for the forgiveness of their sins. The resurrected Christ appears to many people over a span of 40 days before he bodily ascends into heaven. 
From there, he rules and reigns with God the Father and sends the Holy Spirit to teach his followers. It is also maintained that one day Jesus will return to this earth to judge all humans, living and dead, and grant eternal life to those who put faith in him and eternal death for those who don't. Christians call the message of Jesus Christ the gospel, meaning the good news. And that is Christianity. Simple, a beginning understanding. It's neat to use different clips like this and then have the kids talk about them. But it's a nice introduction to what is Christianity and kind of thinking about it in the big picture. Our choir was going to perform as well. And uh, not enough were able to make it. So I have done an alternative. And what I have done is I've chosen, so one of the leading writers of Christian praise and worship music right now is Matt Redman. Um, he's one of the biggies who's written uh, 50 to 100 pieces. Uh, he's well known globally. And this is a modern version he did on It Is Well With My Soul. So one of the interesting things happening right now is, is making new verses and taking parts of old hymns and creating hybrid hymns. And this is one of those versions, but it's a concert version of him doing it live in a worship setting. So this one isn't meant to sing along with it. It's meant for you to just simply listen to it and how he takes a different set of words that create a whole new set of meanings for parts of this song in his well with my soul.
I would invite all who are able to please rise and let us turn to page 15 in the red hymnal or to the screen and let us join together in the UCC statement of faith. We believe in God, the eternal spirit, father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our father, and to his deeds we testify. He calls the world into being, creates man in his own image, and sets before him the ways of life and death. He seeks in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. He judges men and nations by his righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord, he has come to us and shared our common law, conquering sin and death, and reconciling the world to himself. He bestows upon us his Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. He calls us into his Church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship to be his servants in the service of men, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. We promise to all who trust him forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, his presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in his knowledge. So that we stay calm, that we keep our anxiety in check, our fears in check, and that we do the things that help rather than out of fear and panic, do the things that hinder. Help us to listen to the authorities and the advice they're giving so that we don't overwhelm hospitals in unnecessary ways. We don't over hoard needed resources so that hospitals have shortages and other people have shortages. Help us to remember that we're all in this together. Help us to remember that you are moving. You are always creating anew in your world. You are always working to redeem your creation and your humanity, and we are all yours. Help us to never lose sight of that. Help us to reach out by phone those around us that we know, to make sure they're okay, to make sure they have the basics that they need. Help us to learn from this, to grow from this. Help us to see how easy it is for us to lose sight that the entire world is yours and the human race on the whole planet is yours and how connected we really are, even when sometimes we Help us to remember 
that you were always with us. Your spirit is always moving in the depths of everything. Help us to simply trust in you in this time, to stay calm, to let your love abound, let your peace reign, and to trust that you will move us through this to a better place. Be with us, all those who are here this day. Be with those who aren't able to be with us, who may not be able to be with us physically present in the days to come. Help them to find the ways to connect with each other and with you. Help us to continue to worship and to praise you through all of this. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us join together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, let us remain seated, but join together in there is a wilderness in God's mercy, which is found on 272 in the red hymnal, and the words are projected. Did I say wilderness? Well, it's wideness anyway. <laughs> I, know, I find this fascinating because what the brain actually does is after you learn a word, it makes a picture of it, and you read it as a picture, not as the individual letters. So when you look at it too quickly, your mind will be flopping through a file of pictures. And if you speak before you got the right picture, you say the wrong word. It's fascinating to watch it, but I, I can see my brain doing that sometimes. I'm like, ah, I'm talking too quick. <laughs> anyway, I want to talk about both the gospel story and Paul's words in Romans, especially Paul's words in Romans. But the, they really make sense when you think through this story of the woman at the well. And it's a very familiar story, and it's a very powerful story because there are so many cultural things happening here that are being broken or violated. There's so much tension going on here. The Samaritans and the Jews, Israel, are supposed to be worshiping the same God, yet Samaria had its own temple and its own versions of the scriptures different from Israel's temple and their versions of the scriptures, and yet they were supposed to be worshiping the same God. There was huge tension. Jews felt it was completely unfaithful to God to have anything to do with them. Coming in contact with them could be seen as unclean. Huge tension between these two groups of people. 
big discomfort, both of whom are under Roman rule, and that Roman Empire had the ability that if you did something that angered the leaders of the Roman Empire enough, whole villages were wiped out as a sign to everybody, we're in charge, you're not. So it's a time with incredible tension, a time with incredible possibilities, and here's Jesus in his ministry, and he's not ministering to Jews, but he's in a Samaritan town. And he's sitting outside of the town at the well, and his disciples have gone into town looking for food, and a woman comes up to him. That alone is a problem. Even if he was in Israel at a town outside of a well, and a Jewish woman came up to him, if he's a good, faithful, devout, holy Jewish man, he shouldn't be talking to the woman. It's a dangerous thing. It's, 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 it really upset God was the understanding. So having it be a Samaritan woman is amazing. And he not only talks to her, but he asks her for water. Because she's coming to draw water. There's just so many layers of what shouldn't be happening that are happening right here. And what's amazing is you can see in Jesus this focus. Everyone is mine and my father's. So here's someone in need. That's powerful in and of itself. Not just someone in need. Here is a Samaritan woman in need. And, and he asked her to get him water. And she's a little bit taken aback because he's talking to her. He's Jewish. He might have even looked like someone of importance of some kind, possibly. But he's just sitting at the well. And he asks for water. And so she draws it up. And then he gets in a conversation with her. And in that conversation, she discovers that he knows key things about her. Not even really good things about her, but things that speak to struggles, speak to brokenness. She has had five husbands and is living with someone now who she is not married to. That speaks to a lot of wounds and a lot of hurts and a lot of brokenness. And he says to her, if you knew who I was, you would be asking me for living water. And he's suddenly moving into metaphorical language, strange language. I can offer you living water. And she's struggling with who is this guy. And as they're beginning this conversation, it comes to a point where she says, well, I know there is a promised Messiah who's going to come and who's going to set things right. And Jesus says to her, I am that Messiah. And she responds to his words with faith. Not only that, she goes into the town, she tells people in the town, and they come out to the well, and they begin talking with him, and they invite him to stay, and he stays for multiple days. His disciples are in shock that he was even talking to this woman or the change of events and the circumstances that happened. And many people listen to his words and believe. And it's this beautiful, beautiful story because it gets at the heart of what faith is and who, that, who it is in. It is in Jesus. And we lose sight of that. We miss that. We, we, we sometimes jump over that. Jesus didn't go to her and say, oh, you're a heathen, filthy sinner. Your whole life is all screwed up. He said, I offer you living water. He doesn't say, I offer you a new set of rules or I offer you the energy to get rules done correctly. He says, I offer you living water. Simply believe in me. And she does. And many in that village do in hearing his words of who he is and what he is about. I want us to have that story in mind as we hear Paul's words because Paul is really pushing us to understand what's at stake. What does it really mean to be a Christian? Hear this. I want to go through this kind of slowly so that we hear it with that story in mind. Therefore, since we are justified by faith. We are made right in our ability to stand before God because of our faith in 
Jesus. Not because we follow the Ten Commandments really well, or that we get all of God's law correctly, or that we follow what the U.S. says is right and wrong, and we get all of that right or really well. He says we're justified by faith. We have peace with God. Peace with God. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ. It doesn't come through our actions. It comes through Jesus' actions. Through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. That undeserved gift. God giving us that grace when we do not deserve that grace. We're still sinners. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. In adult ed, we're going through Paul's letter to the churches in Galatia, and in Galatians 2 and 3, Paul gets very much into this. Here is the law, and here is Jesus. Jesus saves, law does not. What Jesus gives when we get that he saves is the Holy Spirit. Not more law. That's hard to really get and to have sink in because we turn everything into law when if we're not careful and try and turn it into how do I impress God? How, what are my duties and obligations as if I need to impress instead of how do I love others because wow, God loves me and I'm amazed by this. But here's Paul. That love of God is poured into us. Through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Pentecost is coming. Pentecost is already here. It's an amazing thing to think about. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Us. While we were weak. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners. That's incredible good news. That's incredible hope. Much more surely than now that we have been justified by his blood. Not me being a good person. Not me being righteous in worldly standards. Not me being by a noble follower. I'm justified by his blood. We'll be saved through him. From the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received. Not we took hold of and grabbed, earned did it ourselves. We received reconciliation. What incredible words. That woman at the well believed in Jesus and received reconciliation. Didn't matter that she was a woman. Didn't matter that she was a Samaritan. Didn't matter she'd been married five times. Didn't matter that she was living with someone she wasn't married to. She had faith in Jesus. That's the promise of God. When we trust in Jesus that he has done what was needed for us to stand before God, then, then we are made whole. Then 
we are made new, then we get the grace of God. And what that does is it sets us free to live and love in a completely different way. That we do it because we can. We do it because God loves us. We do it because why wouldn't we? It changes everything, and that promise is for each one of us, that Jesus died to set us free, that we receive that reconciliation and trust in what Jesus did, and that woman in the well received it, and those in the town who got who Jesus was received it as well. That's the good news of the gospel, the beautiful thing of what God is doing, reconciling us through the blood of Jesus, calling us to trust and live out of that trust. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, help us to dwell in these struggling times on what you have done for us through Jesus. Help us to simply trust that you love us, value us, have forgiven us, have claimed us, have gifted us with your spirit. And have empowered us to simply be your children. And set us free to love and help us in these challenging weeks to come to find new ways to live that love around us in these challenging times. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We've been asked by our conference not to pass the plate, so again I'm reiterating that we have offering plates by the entrances to the sanctuary so that you can place your offerings in there as you come in or as you go out. So I'm going to read our call to offering and then we're simply going to rise for the praise of God. Through Christ we are called to be sowers of God's truth and reapers of God's blessings. Therefore let us joyfully share a portion of what we have received from God, so those in need may rejoice with us. Will all who are able please rise.
So we've been asked to not hold hands, so let us simply just sing aloud together our blessing to one another. 